All right, welcome to day 20 of Advent of Code 2024. Today was quite difficult. It took about an hour for both parts. Um, you see, part one took about 56 minutes for me, which is a long time. Um, I tried a lot of different approaches, but eventually realized the problem was simpler than I thought it was. So just reading comprehension. Um, in this video, you're going to see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles, and then I'll give some explanations. So let's get started. Okay, wow, today was tough. How do we do today's? Well, we're in a puzzle. This is a grid puzzle, again. Um, we have had a lot of grid puzzles, but today's is pretty fun. The idea is that we're in a racetrack, and we need to get from the start to the end. And we're given that there's only one path from the start to the end. So where that says that is right here. There's only one path from the start to the end, and this will be important later on. The task at hand is to find the number of ways to shave off time by cheating. So to cheat, we are allowed to phase through walls. So essentially, for example, over here, um, we're allowed to cheat for two seconds. So during these two seconds, we can be in a wall. So what this means is, at the very beginning, say we, we start our cheat at this location, and then we're allowed to make two moves that are go, going through walls. So that includes going here, from here to here, and then from here to here. So from this dot to the one, and then from the one to the two. Those two are valid moves if we decide to cheat starting at this location and ending at this location. Um, essentially, we need to count the number of cheats that save more than 100 steps. And how a cheat is identified is with its start and ending locations, and this is going to be important. So how did I implement this? Initially, I did some breadth research stuff, which turned out to be unnecessary, so I wasted a lot of time on that. But how we should actually do this is first determine the unique path that goes from the start to the end, because we're given that there's only one path. So it kind of looks like you know, a giant loop. And how we do this is just iterating through all of the steps in the path. We know there's only one direction we can take at every step. So we find that direction, and we go in that direction. So we start our path off as just a singular element, which is the starting location, um, get that through input parsing, and check all four cardinal directions. If the direction in, if the position in that direction is valid, i.e., it's within the grid, and it's not our second to last location, and it's not a wall, then we can go in that path. So this loop over here just determines the entire path um, as a list of coordinates. After that, what we want to do is at every step branch off and see whether we save time. So that's this giant loop over here. Um, basically, we go through all of the coordinates on the original path, and then we see how many seconds we would save if that was the starting location, and we check all the ending locations as well. So essentially, we just simulate all of the possible steps we could take that phase through walls. So for every single possible first step we could make, and for every possible second step we can make, where do we end up? That's this calculation. If we end up in a valid spot, i.e. we're within the grid and we're not in a wall, then this is a valid phase. Um, we start at this location along the path, and we end at this calculated location. Does that save us time? To determine that, we look up the number of remaining steps um, if we were ending at this path. Because from every spot in the grid that is accessible, we should be able to get to the end. Um, that is an assumption that we make. There's no, like, holes, we're assuming. Then we can find the number of steps to reach the end using our original path calculation just by looking up which index within that path we are at for our phase end coordinate, and then adding that up. So that's this calculation over here, the remaining time. We add that to the current time, so the time that we step off the path. And then we also add 2 for the two steps that we took in the middle over here for the phase. To calculate the amount of save time, we just calculate the original amount of time we took, subtract the current amount of new time, and then add that to a uh, dictionary, which contains the starting coordinate, ending coordinate for the phase um, as the key, and then the amount of save time as the value. At the end, we just check the number of saved, so we, the number of phases 
that say more than 100 picoseconds, and that's going to be our answer for part one. For part two, we're allowed to phase for at most 20 picoseconds now. So we can reach essentially from any points, um, other points that are within 20 picoseconds, and that counts as a phase, and then we can find our way to the end. So for our code, most of it is the same. So determining the original path, this is all the same. And then uh, creating a lookup table for number of steps remaining at every point along the path. This is all that changes. So since only the start and end locations matter, they clarified this in the problem. Um, if we go uh, from the same start to the same end, but through different paths, they still count as the same cheat. So we only count those as one in our answer. And that's captured in here. This is actually very nice because we don't need to use any fancy combinatorics. We just look at all the possible ending locations. So 20 is the mass maximum length of a cheat. We look at everything that's within a 20 by 20 grid. Technically, it's a diamond. And that's this check over here because um, we use Manhattan distance. So everything that's within a 20 step radius is accessible for all of our cheats. We look at how many steps it would take. So we're allowed to take less than 20 seconds. Um, that's this check over here. We calculate the amount of time it would take to go to that ending location. If that is more than 20, then we're not going to allow it. Also, if we end at a wall, that's not allowed. Or if we end outside the grid, that's not good as, uh, either. Um, but if we do end at a location that's within 20 steps, then we can calculate the amount of time remaining. And the total time is just our current time, plus the remaining time, plus the amount of time it took for the phase. And same as part one, we save that inside our dictionary just to make sure that all of our cheats are unique. And then again, count up the ones that take at most 20 steps. Uh, sorry, that save at least 100 steps. And that's going to be our answer. All right, so that's it for day 20. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And if you want to check out my code, it's linked to in the GitHub repository, which is in the description. So that's it for day 20. See you tomorrow for day 21.